Today's title is Dear Friends. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Good morning, friend. Good morning, friend. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Look at your other neighbor and say, Good morning. Good morning, friend. Good morning, friend. Praise the Lord. Don't leave anybody out. Amen. We're all one body. Good morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, so this morning, I won't tarry. Let's go ahead and get the opening passage up there. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 through 12. Amen. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 through 12. Do we have that on the screen? Mm-hmm. Amen. Let's run it. Amen. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 through 12. New Living Translation. Amen. When you're there, all God's people say amen. If you have it right now, say amen. Amen. All good. Everyone has it. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 through 12. Amen. And let's read together. Ready? Read. Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then, even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, you gave me this message, so now I ask you to preach and teach through me and let it go on good ground to reap a hundredfold harvest. In Jesus' mighty name, all God's people say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The title of this message is Dear Friends. The Lord gave this to me and I was uh, in my home and he said to me, you have to break down where believers should be in their walk with one another. The reason I entitled this Dear Friends is because we are one body and we're actually a family. But some people aren't there yet because you haven't learned to trust one another. So we're going to just keep it at friends. Amen. So. This morning, this is where God has me at. I'm going to read this again, and we're going to keep it on the screen, 11 through 12, and I'm going to begin to break it down. It says, Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. God broke this down to me. This is not your permanent home. This is why the author of this passage says, Temporary residents and foreigners. When someone is a foreigner in a place, they usually have to have a tour guide. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you are trying to become a citizen of a certain country, you have to get your visa. Amen. Uh, Is anybody foreigners in here? Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, look. Okay. Praise God. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. No, I mean literally foreigners, not not biblical foreigners. I mean literal foreign. One for. Okay. Praise the Lord. Wait. Oh, yes. Okay. Foreigners. Okay. Where are you from? Ghana. Ghana. Nigeria. Nigeria. St. Vincent Glory. So they're foreigners here, but they've had to learn how to adapt. Watch me. When you come to a certain place in the physical realm, you have to learn how to adapt. But in the spirit realm, we do not adapt to the world. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this. That means don't adapt. Amen. Somebody say don't adapt. Watch this. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. Let me break this down to you. The Lord spoke to me and made it very clear. The Bible says, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. In other words, the world as we know it is an unbelieving state. It's an unbelieving state. Believers are the outcasts because the majority is unbelievers. Somebody say amen. Amen. See, whenever you're the eyeball out, that means you're not like everyone else. Raise your hand if you're a Christian. Oh, God. So if you're a Christian, raise your hand, you just got ridiculous, amen. So if you're a Christian, amen, then that means that the world around you should be uncomfortable. Mm, Oh, I'm about to make this make sense. We're not waiting on points, preaching power. See, when you are an unbeliever, the world is comfortable to you. But when you become a believer, the things that the world does is now strange. Say that. I'm trying to preach. Yeah. Say that. So God told us here, he says, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. 
because you live with them. This, even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior. Watch me. When something is honorable, it's to be respected. God spoke to me and said the Christians have to get back into having behavior that is respected by unbelievers in order for the believers to have an impact. Yes. See, you don't have to like me, but you must respect me. So here it says in front of your unbelieving neighbors, right? So that they may glorify God in the day of judgment when he judges the world. How many know that we as believers will judge the world? I'm speaking foreign to them. I'm just See, the Bible says that we shall even judge angels. So how much more shall we not judge one another? Meaning hold one another accountable. Can I help somebody? Come on. Colossians 4, verse 2 and 5. Put me on the screen. I know sometimes it's hard to get y'all to turn quickly, so I made it easier for you. We put everything on the screen. Now, all you got to do is take notes. Somebody say yes. Yes. Oh, glory be to God. Colossians 4, 2 and 5 reads it like this. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Watch me. In order to witness to unbelievers, you have to be an opportunist. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. I know some of you are natural born opportunities, so this shouldn't be hard for you. Oh, you oh, don't like that. Listen, sometimes we have to take advantage of the situation in order to preach the gospel effectively. Yes. Yes. I ain't saying nothing in here. So if you're awake, say amen. amen. I just want to make sure y'all are alive because y'all giving me dead posted spirits. So we wake up. Amen. Watch this. You have to understand that if you are a believer and you are talking to an unbeliever, they don't care about what you say. They care about what you do. They're not looking at your words. They're looking at your life. Come on. Some of you have to learn how to adapt in the environment you are in because you come off abrasive. I'm telling you what the word of the Lord gave me this week. Dear friends, watch the way you speak to unbelievers because we're trying to convert them, not condemn them. I'm going to preach anyway. I don't need no amens. Let me tell you. Watch this. It says, live wisely among those who are not believers. When someone is wise, they learn how to assess things, and they assess them properly, and they know when to speak and when not to speak. They know when to move and when to be still. Oh, I ain't saying that. They know when to preach and when to just say amen. Amen. Come on. We got a lot of Christians trying to be pastors in the real world when God told us to preach the gospel, not be shepherds to the unbelief. Y'all ain't saying that. Yeah. My Bible tells me, go, teach all nations, not pastor them. Oh, y'all ain't saying yeah. that. See, gifts and callings, God gave them, Ephesians 4. But he called the ones that are meant to do it. Now I see millennials trying to be pastors online. The worst thing you gave this millennial generation is Instagram. Because they use it as their ministry. And there's nothing wrong with using it as your ministry as the Lord leads you. But when you begin to step outside of your boundary, now it goes from being a preaching message to a condemnation message. Yeah. I ain't saying nothing in here, Johnny. I'm trying to help them. Listen, I hope you know there's more than just y'all in here. People online listening to. So if they don't apply, just say amen. <laughs> amen, praise the Lord. Now look, here's the deal. The Lord spoke to me and said, Colossians 4, 2, it says, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. The reason why we are instructed to devote ourselves to something is because when you devote yourself to something, you give your all to it. Amen. You're supposed to devote yourself, devote yourself to prayer because when you pray, it's a communication line to God. Yeah. If you're awake, say Amen. 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 Who y'all pray to? Do y'all pray to God? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not making sense, minister. We're going to make it make sense. So when you, when you talk to someone, you're talking to said person, correct? Mm -hmm. And in order to have a conversation, it has to be two-way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch me. In order to get what you need from God to minister to unbelievers, you have to get clear-cut instructions which will not come unless you pray. pray. Yeah. Yep. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind. Somebody say alert. alert. I want the church to be alert. That's why I keep asking you if you're awake, say amen, because y'all don't seem alert enough. I want you. After a while, I won't have to say that as much because y'all gonna be alert. Say alert. Alert. Oh, come on. See, don't let the old folks out do you, because the old folks be screaming, shouting from the beginning of the sermon to the end of the sermon, and they be listening. Amen. 
Young folk, y'all young in here. The whole church in here young, except for my older crew in the back. And they said they young till they go yeah. home. Amen. <laughs> so, amen. We alert. Amen. So if you're alert, say, I'm alert. I'm alert. Tap your neighbor and say, wake up. Wake up. Oh, yes. Wake yes. up. Yes. Watch this. Yes. You have to devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. What I noticed about gratitude is that when you are thankful for something, it shows in your actions. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yeah. If you're really thankful about being saved by grace, the last week's sermon should apply. You will feel compelled. Yes. Yes. Johnny, I love when it all comes back together. I promise I don't do this on purpose. Watch this. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Watch me. This is what God gave me. This week, the Lord sat me down. And while giving me this sermon, he spoke as clear as day. And said that the believers have to learn how to have good people skills. I'm going to preach. Many believers become abrasive the more they grow in God. Which shows me that they're living under the law and not under grace. Come on Amen. Amen. My Bible tells me that we are no longer under the law because Jesus came and undid the law even though he came to fulfill. If it was based on the law, none of y'all would be here. We'd all be dead. Oh, come on. Me included. If it was under the law, then I wouldn't be in this pulpit. right? But because of grace, then we are able to move and have salvation in God's forgiven, saving power. Watch me. So in order for us to move forward as a body, not just this church. As a body worldwide, we have to have people skills. God spoke to me. He said, many people have callings, but they are rude and abrasive. Ooh, say that. The reason no one is listening is because the church has become rude as a yes. Say that. I don't need no amen. Yes. Come let you know. on. See, we have gotten so uh, accustomed to being right about everything that we don't know how to have grace with people that are wrong. Right. Yes. I'm going to say it one more time because they didn't get it. We have gotten so accustomed to being right about everything that we don't have grace for people who are wrong. Come on. That's not moving under grace. That's under the law. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I teach? Yeah. See, in order to train a dog, you have to teach them how to roll over, how to sit, but you have to have incentives. Yeah. You can't just say sit and give them no puppy treat. Yeah. I'm not going to say nothing, okay? So you can't just teach them to sit down and don't pat them on the head and say, good boy, good girl. I'm going to preach the brother as you call He got dogs. When you train them, when you sit them down, you have to give them some type of validation. Why do we as saints come to God and we try to bring people over with the attitude that we didn't want when we was out there? That's not a healthy incentive. So you have different types of incentives, but the only one that's profitable is the healthy incentive. Mm -hmm. The reason why certain people excel in sales at their job is because they have healthy incentives. At the end of the year, you might win a $500 gift card. At the end of the year, you might get a $10,000 bonus. At the end of the year, they might give out a company car. So the people are working towards this incentive because it's profitable. In order to get unbelievers to come to God, you have to give them healthy incentives. In other words, make the most of every opportunity. If you see someone who is struggling with pornography, but doesn't want to struggle with it anymore, you let them know. If you give your life to God, God can cleanse you from all unrighteousness and this addiction can be broken because the anointing yeah. breaks the yoke. Yeah. Yeah. Come on! Healthy yeah. incentives. Yeah. If you're awake, say amen. amen. I know y'all used to that slow start up and then I jump into it, but we ain't doing that because I'm pressed for time. Amen. So pay attention. Watch me. Next thing on the screen. Jesus said... Actually, don't put it on the screen. Run it back. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 16, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. Deacon, I'm going to preach to you. He said, but be wise as serpents. I'm going to stop right there. Do you know what a serpent is? What is a serpent? 
No, maybe y'all don't know. Let's say it together. What is a serpent? A snake. A snake. Is a snake friendly or dangerous? dangerous? Some people keep them as pets, but I notice usually when people keep them as pets, they're trying to have dominion over something that was cursed anyway. I ain't saying that. I'm going to preach. See, 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 here's the deal. The Bible says that God told the serpent, you are cursed on your belly from here on out because you deceive the woman. Why we got cursed things in our house? Mm. <laughs> Here's the deal. It's not about the actual serpent. Some people have a serpent spirit. Mm -hmm. So God said, be wise like them, but don't be harmful like them. Yeah. Be wise as a serpent, but be harmless as a dog. Oh, I See, you care for serpents and birds differently. Oh, yeah. I can put a dove in a cage and feed it some things, and I don't have to worry about it getting antsy and turning and attacking me. But if I don't feed that serpent and he begins to get aggressive, usually serpents begin to gauge you out. Serpents begin to stretch out and begin to coil themselves around you to determine the size of you and the girth of you to see if they can overtake you. Y'all like this. So you're walking in an environment of unbelievers who have demonic spirits because if you ain't filled with Holy Spirit, you're filled with Holy Spirit. So you're walking in environments with unbelievers who have docile serpents and some have aggressive serpents. And Jesus told us, be wise like all serpents, but be harmless as a devil. Yes, Lord. Come on. I, I, wish I, I wish I had some preaching. Jesus. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm trying to get it across to Brother Johnny. He's going to get it in a second. See, see what I notice is some believers go in the environment of serpents and they morph into the snakes they're supposed to not be like. Uh, oh! You better uh, preach, Pastor. Yeah. Jesus. Come on. Can I? Can I? Yep. You're supposed to be harmless as a dove. Why are we likened to a dove? Because Holy Spirit is likened into it. Come on now. Come on, Holy Spirit. Good. Good. Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a... No. Oh, I got some now. saints in here now. They, they woke now, prophet. They woke, they woke, they woke. See, see, Brother Johnny, what I understand is that the Bible tells us to be wise. And when I notice that wise word, you see, all through Proverbs, God gave Solomon wisdom. And then Solomon wrote it down. So when, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. But God is the word. So if you study the word, you'll get wisdom. Listen. Come on. Come on. I'm in here. Come on. I'm reaching in here. Come on. I'm reaching in here. Run that next thing on the screen. Matthew 5, 37. If you're awake, say amen. Amen. But let your yes be yes, oh God, and your no, no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Let me make this break down into context. I know you're like, what? Watch me. In other words, K-I-S-S, -S -S, keep it simple, sweetheart. Unnecessary chat chat opens up the door to the enemy. Come on. Yes. Say that. You ever notice how you spend too much time on the phone with a certain person and y'all end up in conflict every time? No, y'all ain't got to say that in here. I know it, trust me. Too. When some people, you get on the phone and they get to talking and then after the 30 minute mark, it's just turned into a whole bunch of gossip and foolishness and now you leave with your spirit bogged down and drained and you're trying to figure out why the anointing has not broken the yoke because the yoke has broken the anointing. Too much chit chat. <laughs> You got to keep it simple. Let your yes be, Evangelist Remy, I'm going to say it. Let your yes be yes and let your no be no. In other words, don't engage in every conversation. You can't hop off in every situation. You got to learn to stay in your lane. Because if you move outside your lane and the anointing is not covering you in that lane, then you open up yourself to demonic activity. Somebody say yes. Watch me. Watch me. First Peter 2, verse 13 through 17. I'm running through it. If you're awake, say amen. amen. Oh, glory. The church is awake now. John, you heard that? That sounded like a hundred folk. God, let me pray. Amen. Watch this. First Peter 2, verse 13. Look at it. It says, for the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority. Stop right there. Submission makes people cringe. When you say submit, people go. The Bible says, Wives, submit to your husbands. Women, nowadays, they be like, I'm my own woman. I'm in the team. I love y'all, women of God. I love y'all. Y'all don't say that. The saints don't say that. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. We say something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The saints don't say that. Minister Allen, they don't say that. That's what I'm saying. 
Mm. Uh, so, so, when you hear submit, people go, submit? Watch this. But it says here, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of the state. In other words, the president. Deacon, can I preach? I want to preach. I don't ever want to hear another believer offer their opinion about a political party and they're not praying. You should pray instead of having an opinion. Come on. Come on. I'm so tired of seeing men and women of God using their platform leaders and using it to speak against the people that God has put in place. Because my Bible tells me that God puts the king in place and removes him. So, I don't care how you feel about Trump. Shut your mouth and pray. Come on. Yes. Come on. Submit to all human authority, yes. whether the king is head of the state or the officials he's as appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. Watch me. Policemen don't pull you over and arrest you unless you're breaking the law. Come on. Why? It's quiet in here. Some people may have been arrested before. Uh, listen, uh, whenever I was abrasive with cops during my young gangbanging days, I received an abrasive response. But now that I am a self, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, uh, a person with self-control and a law-abiding citizen, I realize that I pay their, 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 uh, their salary with my taxes. See, I treat them like the public servant that they are. See, you don't treat your servants nasty. But when you don't realize your authority, then you treat people up. See, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Wow. See, see, I call police to come help me put my tires back on the car if they pop off or go flat. And they come help me with glee because they understand this dude understands who we are. We are public servants to the community. Yeah. But if you come in with the wrong mindset, there's definitely life the power of the tongue and the things that you think can also dictate what happened. <laughs> can I preach? Yes. Yeah. Watch me. It says they punish those who do wrong and honor those who do right. Watch me. 15. It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves, so don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Watch me. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. Watch me. I'm going to break this down for you. Many people get stuck on verse 16 and go, slaves to God. Well, let me explain it to you in a way that you will understand. Go ahead. Come on, Pastor. Break it down. Um, you see, when the bank gives you a loan, you got f free money, but you have to pay it back. We were bought with a price, so let us therefore honor God in our mortal body. So yes, you are free to do whatever you want because that's where God's free will comes into play. But if you do whatever you want, then what God did for you becomes null and void and you just condemn yourself to Fahrenheit. Come on, I'm trying to help somebody. So it says, don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. People say, that ain't my walk with God. It should be because the Bible was written for everybody, not yeah. one person. Yeah. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach. I'm going to keep on preaching this way, Johnny, and God going to open up the doorway. I'm telling you right now, God going to do it. Oh, yes, it's coming. Watch this. Watch this. Respect everyone and love the family of, believe it, somebody say family. family. You see, I entitled it, dear friends, but you should probably look at your neighbor now and understand that you should say, hey, family. Hey, family. We're a family. We're a body. We're a unit. We move in sync. We move in, uh, come on, unity, harmony. This is why Psalm 133 says, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. The brethren is the body of Christ. Yeah. It says it's like unto the oil that went from the top of Aaron's head down to the skirts of his garment. In other words, when the body connects and unifies, there is a corporate anointing that settles on the house. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to open y'all eyes yeah. to something. See, bickering 
brings the division, and division brings the devil. Somebody say the devil. Yeah. And this is why many churches got devils inside of it, not because the devil showed up because God wasn't there, but because division brought a portal for the enemy to show up. Come on. Come on. Unity equals corporate anointing. Somebody say unity. unity. Equals, equals corporate anointing. Equals corporate anointing. Do you want to sit beside somebody that has the anointing to break a yoke if the enemy comes against you? Yes. Yes. Then be in unity. Come on. I'm trying yes. to help somebody. Yes. Watch me. Respect everyone. Love the family believers. Watch this. Fear God and respect the king. Watch this. You don't fear the king because the king is a man and God puts in place hey, and hey. removes who he wants. You fear God. But you rather serve God than serve man. Hey. If yes. man puts you there, he can take you out of there. But if God puts you there, you ain't going nowhere to people. Come on, come on, come on. I'm trying to preach. Jesus! I'm trying to preach. 1 Peter 2, verse 21 through 25. Put me on the screen. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. Oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> Validation from people has to leave out of your spirit. The desire for that has to remove itself because you'll never get it if you really follow it after Christ. Come on. This is why he gave us believers because he knows that people have a physical need for affection and validation. But you should seek it in people just like you because we all are outcasts from the environment we're in. Foreigners and. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to preach. If you're looking for that unbeliever to validate your walk, you will be looking until the day Jesus returns. <laughs> and if you're still looking when Jesus returns, fair enough. Because the Bible, because the Bible says, you're not listening. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And I can't be holy if my attention is off the master. Amen. Yeah. You see, minister, when you give it to them like this, in love, sometimes people interpret it as, uh, you know, condemnation. But there's no condemnation to them who are in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Are we all Christians? Yes. Yes. So you're in Christ Jesus, a.k.a. no condemnation. Amen. Oh, no, I'm going to preach. We kill that in the name of Jesus. See, when I hear it, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. See, let me understand, make you understand something. Don't misconstrue my message. My message is for you to understand how Christians should move in this end time because time is ticking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. If you think that this world will be here forever, you should have looked outside yesterday and tried to understand why it was just 65 degrees and now it's snowing outside. But my Bible tells me in Matthew, yeah, yeah. Sister Kwanzaa cannot uh -huh. preach, it says that in that day, yeah, you, will not, see, you will not be able to tell the difference in the season. <laughs> Tribulation shall come. Plagues, coronavirus. Come on now. Shall come. Speak. Yeah. Speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, mother against daughter and father against son. Yeah. 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 And if it wasn't for a little bit, the very elect, who the same sanctified shape would be the seed. Then Jesus will come. come on, my God. My God. So you let these Christian pastors big time gas you up to think we got a bunch of time out here. Yeah, and you'll be sitting down here with them. Come on. You know, you know, Jesus. <laughs> Prophet Brian said like this. We ain't got no problem preaching grace. But we want to preach grace and truth. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. Look at this. It says... He is your example. Who is? Jesus. And you must follow in his steps. Watch this. He never sinned, nor ever deceived anyone. Oh, God. He did not retaliate when he was insulted, nor threaten revenge when he suffered. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. Oh, God. Let me break this down for you. People will not always speak well of you, but my Bible also tells me beware when all men speak well of you. For so they did unto the false prophets. You see, people 
that always have a good, feel good word. I got a problem with that. Because then my rip the scale, you know, my discernment. Come on. Discernment yeah. of gifts, of, you know, that's gift of Holy Spirit. Yeah. Discernment of spirits. Not just discernment, discernment of spirits. Ha <laughs> ha. See, oh. I don't need to discern the natural man. I need to discern his spirit. Come on. Amen. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. When unbelievers tell me I got discernment, yes, gifts and callings are without repentance, good for you. But you need to discern those spirits we need to get out of you. Amen. <laughs> Remy, I'm trying to, I'm here, I mean, I'm here, the saints is like, oh my God, he's, here. yeah, 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 call on him while he's near, amen, watch it, listen, watch me, it says Jesus personally carried our sins, verse 24, in his body, oh my God, on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right, watch this, by his wounds, you are healed. Listen to me. Healing, mental, physical, emotional, spiritually, financially. Healing by his wounds. He carried our sins in his body so that we could be dead to sin. Look here. When you're dealing with a sinful addiction, a habit, something that's not good for you, you have to understand your authority. This is not something believers should be struggling with, Brother Johnny. Because when they realize that death and life and life, not just death, death and life are in the power of the tongue. They'll speak differently. They'll speak those things that be not as though they were. They'll say, I don't struggle with this sickness anymore. I don't care if it was in my family. It stops here. Oh, I'm, trying I'm trying to preach. Because the whole purpose of Jesus carrying our sins, all of our sins, the whole world, in his body was so that we could be free from sin. Yeah. And the word specifically says dead to it. When someone is dead to you, even if they're living, you don't acknowledge them whatsoever. Right. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Minister, I'm going to preach. If something is dead to you, you have no acknowledgement of it, you don't address it, you don't even think about it because it's dead to you. This is what I'm trying to understand. When believers say that they're over something, but they're constantly talking about it, and they're constantly bickering over it, and they're constantly gossiping about it, or God, you can't be dead to it because you still... God called us to righteousness. Amen. We are the righteousness of God. You can't be relishing in unrighteousness if you're free. Yeah. Yes. Oh, let me break it down for a way they can understand. <laughs> See, after I got bailed out of jail, I wasn't still thinking about jail, especially after I beat my case, because I no longer acknowledge that prison sentence that I did not get. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> oh, minister, we, you hear, John? You hear? Yeah. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Minister, listen, listen. Look. Oh, God, I ain't got time to play with the saints. Come on. <laughs> look at this. Verse 25. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your soul. Somebody say, of your soul. Of your soul. The reason why God is still in the business of saving souls is because the guardian of the souls is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The more you become like Jesus, the more souls becomes your priority. Yes. 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 Not the gifts. You're supposed to crave those earnestly, but that's not the number one priority. Yes. See, I look at my armor bearers because their faces are so pleasant always. We talked about this before. And so I look at them and I understand they did with me. They did with, with me. Watch me. You see, the good shepherd leaves the 99 to go get the one. Right. I can't go get the one and convince them to come with me if I'm abrasive. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're supposed to reel them in with the rod, not pack them in the head with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, for oh, real. Deacon, I'm going to preach. <laughs> you see, I'll wait to the next part of the sermon to tell you that. Amen. Run to the next part, Sister Kayla. Oh, glory. My favorite. Romans 12, verse number 2. Oh, yes. If you awake, church, say amen. 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 Let's look at this. Romans 12, verse 2 reads it like this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Somebody say think. Think. Question. Don't answer out loud. 
When's the last time you changed the way you think about particular things? Yes, think on it. Let it sizzle in your spirit. Because here's the deal. God wants to change your way of thinking about everything, not just some things. Yeah. Oh yes, oh yes. The believers will grow stronger when they take on the mind of Christ, Philippians 2, instead of having half their mind, half his mind. Because when spirit and flesh are mixing, they go to war. It says in Galatians 5. Yeah. Brother Johnny, I promise you, by the end of this sermon, somebody gonna get it. <laughs> oh yes. What did I say at the top of the sermon? When you go into a new place and you're a foreigner, you learn to adapt. But I told you, God does not want us to adapt. The reason why is because if you adapt to the behavior and customs of this world, then you will think it's okay to listen to secular music and then come in church and say, I love you, Jesus. Then go out and listen to a bunch of cursing outside the house. I'm not trying to go that's what the world says. The world says, as long as God knows my heart. But see, Jeremiah tells me that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Why are you telling me God know your heart? And you saying it like you know your own heart. But God tell me only he know your heart. Which one is it? I'm trying to tell you, you can't come. It's nothing wrong with struggling with something to overcome it. But this is why you need one another. Because if you don't understand that we are family, oh yeah, 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 that we are family, you don't have accountability partners. When you slip up, you slip deeper into what you're being bound under. But when you slip up and you got someone to reach out and touch you, then they can pick you up. Come on, man. I'm trying to help you. Come on, help him. I'm help me. <laughs> Watch me. Then you will learn, verse 2, to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Verse number 9. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Watch me. This is for all you technical saints. You love people. You don't love the sin that the people possess. Come on. Come on. Uh, you, look, you really love them. You <laughs> hate what is evil. You hold tight to what is good. Come on. Yes. Come on. I put it on the board for you so you can understand. <laughs> so don't look at me like you don't understand. This is up there. <laughs> hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. So that means if they're a good person, hold on to that part of them. But that thing that's wrong in them, that's pulling them closer to hell day by day, the more you keep your mouth closed because you don't want to offend them, you need to love them enough to tell them the truth because they will know the truth and the truth will set them free. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. I need about four more Nikki's on the front row. <laughs> Verse 10. Love each other. Prophetess. Love each other. I love her. With genuine affection. Watch Amen. me. You don't have to be married to one another to love someone. Yes. Come on yeah. Now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I love you too. Watch me. Watch me. Love each other with genuine affection. Watch it. And take delight in honoring each other. God broke this down to me this morning, minister. I was on the way. And he broke it down so pristine. You know? And I sat there and I looked at this and I said, my God. The reason why the body as a whole has become in disarray and bickering as a whole. Not each church, but as a whole. It's because they don't honor one another. When you honor someone, you honor the call on their life. You honor the gifts they have. You honor the good in yeah. them. And you hold them accountable for the things they need to fix because you want to see them reach their full potential. But I noticed something, Brother Chris. The thing is that you cannot honor your fellow man if you don't honor God. Yeah. Oh. And honoring God, you honor him by being obedient. Yes. Yeah. Amen. This is my part. You also cannot honor your brother or sister if you don't honor the leaders in the place where he has placed you in. Yeah. I'm going to make that make sense. You see, I would never in my life call my apostle by his first name. 
I'm going to help you. Because I honor him as the man of God that he is. It has nothing to do with his seniority. When you truly honor one another and you understand that there's a calling on Minister Tyler's life, you no longer call him Tyler. He's ministered. Come on, yeah. man. Yeah. I don't care. I'm going to preach. Yep. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. I'm going to preach. Because God ain't going to get me. I'm going to watch me. You know Ezekiel? And if you don't blow the horn, he holds you. No, nah, not today. So look. <laughs> so when I go home, I'm going to be clear conscience. See, you have to honor. If Remy is an evangelist and you see her as just Remy on my love show, that's fine. But when God get a hold to you, he'll show you that the evangelist calling on her life is who she is. Yeah. So now you call her evangelist Remy. Yeah. I ain't got no Amen. help. Yeah. Remy is my spiritual daughter, but I still call her evangelist Remy. Yeah. 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 What's wrong with the saints? <laughs> In the words of Prophet Brown, what's wrong with the church? <laughs> You're going to hell. Know what he's saying? <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> Prophet Brown, crazy. Listen, here's the deal. You got to honor the call on one another. When you honor the call on one another, you make one another stronger because there may be someone lacking in self-esteem. And when you acknowledge the call on their life, you acknowledge the gifts on their life, you acknowledge the glory of God on their life, you lift them up from that place of condemnation that the enemy is trying to keep them in and you edify the saint. I ain't got no help in here. I think the older generation get it better. Baby, Deacon, hold on. Let me help you. See, when Sister Kwanzaa and Deacon, they're a married couple, but when they're amongst one another in my presence, I still address them as Deacon Keith and Sister Kwanzaa, head of the intercession team. And then I begin to see the respect grow for one another in my presence. I, I hope they do it when they go home, but in the midst of the saint, they talk to one another with the respect of the leadership role that they have, just like I call my wife prophet. She hate being called that because she begin to cringe and say, everyone calls themselves a prophetess when they're married to a pastor, and some people ain't even prophetic. That's okay, because you genuinely are prophet. I don't know about it. I'm going to tell you the truth. So why is it that people are seeing it like, well, that's just so and so. The familiarity destroys the anointing that yeah. the Lord can use yeah. to change your life in that person when you don't acknowledge the call. Let's talk about it. Come on. Yeah. I don't need no amens. I'm going to move on. That's a very tight subject. Next thing. Watch this. <laughs> Never be lazy, verse 11, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically, my favorite part. Do you serve God when the cameras are not rolling? Okay, oh, let's go. When no one's watching your Instagram post. Let's go. I'm about to run. Let's go. We can serve God in front of folk, but do we serve God with the same level of enthusiasm when we get up out of people's outside? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. See, in my line of sight, my kids obey me, but when I turn my back, do they still obey me? Yes, because I beat that butt when they don't. <laughs> But what we do is, we don't see God sitting down here with us, so we think that we out of his line of sight when we out of the line of sight of the people of God. Woo! That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't curse around your Christian friends, but you do around your unsafe friends. Are you serving the Lord? I ain't going to say nothing. Wow. 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 I ain't going to say nothing. Wow. Not this group. These saints is fighting. I'm going to tell you right now, Mr. Tyler. they like, uh-uh, ain't me, Pastor. I don't need none of that. Praise <laughs> God. Well, praise God. I literally say yes. yes. I don't do that. I don't do that. Oh, Lord. Oh, wait, Everybody didn't say it's okay. I ain't looking at you. Amen. <laughs> It's okay, praise the Lord, for the honesty. Don't lie in the house of the Lord. Amen. Verse number 12. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble. And keep on praying. Watch me. What did I say? You have to pray in order to get the instructions on how to minister to the people you're trying to reach. Yeah. Yeah. It says, keep on praying. My God. Uh, Sister Kwanzaa, that sounds like prayer without ceasing, don't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. They said it in a whole other chapter, First Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5.22, did it not? Yeah. My God, don't you love when Jesus allows people to repeat things so we get the point? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Verse number 13, when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Watch me. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Look, don't be... Oh, yeah, 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 the minister, you got it. Uh, some people love the church folk in the church, but y'all wouldn't dare have them in your house because you don't know how to practice Woo! hospitality. Come on. You ain't got to ask about me because I got a house full. <laughs> but see, what people thought was in 1 Timothy chapter... 
chapter 3, when Timothy was given instructions by Paul that the bishop should be hospitable, they thought that it didn't apply to the rest of the saints. Then we get here in Romans chapter 12, and we see that every believer should practice hospitality. Somebody say hospitality. hospitality. In other words, be eager to help those in need. Why? When God's people are in need, you be ready to help them. Somebody say ready. 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 If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. It shouldn't take for a bad thing to happen to a saint for you to be willing to help them. You should identify when the crisis is on the way. If you keep on praying, then Holy Spirit will show you when somebody is headed for danger. And you actually can thwart the assignment. I ain't got no intercessors in here. Maybe not. Brother Johnny, maybe not. But I'm telling you right now, like I know my name, if you seek God's faith, well, well, hold on, wait, hold on. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. friends. Maybe the saints don't know. Johnny, he said friends. And the reason why he said friends is because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing. But he said, I've revealed everything that my father has revealed to to you. So if you pray, God will show you when the enemy is about to attack. Yes. You know, those surprise attacks from the enemy mean you ain't prayed enough. <laughs> I'm tired of saints being shot when Satan hit them. Why did you not have that discernment to pick up when Satan was coming for your neck? Yeah. Yeah. You see, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow, the protection of the Almighty. Amen. If you stay in prayer and stay ready, your brother Jacoby, they don't have to get ready. I'm trying to help them. Can, can I help you? Yeah. If you hate me right now, say yes. Praise the Lord. Because <laughs> the saints got quiet. They're like, wow, what is going on? I'm sorry. I, don't, I can't focus on one point. Has God given it? Listen, first of all, you can ask my media team. There ain't no notes in my part. It's just scripture. So all I do is go off the script. <laughs> I just let Holy Spirit lead me off scripture. This ain't no script. I ain't no rapper no more. I don't got to write nothing down. I go in and I go off the dome because God is in my dome. Hello, somebody. Amen. 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 Watch me. Verse number 14. My favorite. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Please stop cussing people out. Pray that God will bless them. Listen, stop cussing people out of your heart. You might not say it out loud, but you say it in your head. Don't do it again. Look, be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Watch me. If you see someone saddened and not okay, don't gloat with your joy in their face. You should be willing to uplift them. Ask them what's wrong. Be genuine. Don't ask them so you can gossip about it. Ask them so you can pray. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Brother Dakari, I hope they get it. I mean, I'm preaching right now. This is preaching power. I'm going to go listen to it myself. Watch this. Watch this. Live in, somebody say harmony. Harmony Harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We hear you. Of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Oh, yes. Oh, millennial saints, they tick me off. They think they know everything about the word until they don't know. Then they want you to have the grace that they didn't have when they was giving the word to somebody else. Oh, yes. See, millennial saints feel like all of them have been called into fivefold ministry. I ain't lying. I promise you. Every bio I see of a Christian, say, uh, pastor, preacher, uh, worship leader, uh, evangelist, teacher, uh, prophet, prophetess. I mean, mean, my God. I didn't know God called this many of us. I thought it was many a call, fewer chosen. I didn't know. (laughs) Maybe he switched it. He changed the word for the times or something. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe I haven't studied to show myself approved, brother. Maybe I don't know nothing. Maybe y'all got me up here because y'all like me. Y'all should talk to the board at the church and get me out of here, since I don't know, you know. <laughs> they like, dang, no, I'm telling the truth. See, the millennials, they, they know everything. I'm a millennial. I had to lose that mentality if I wanted to serve God correctly. Mm-hmm. You see, you don't see him, but I have a spiritual covering, and it ain't just God. It's a 72-year-old Indian man who has been in ministry for 52 years and can tell you the Bible backwards and forwards because he's read it about 30-something times or more. 
in different languages. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. And the anointing that's on his life is so superb that when he steps in the room, I've heard demons literally cry out. Wow. Wow. Yes, so there is no way that I was going to sit here and think I know everything up underneath that man. The devil is a lot. The minute he got something to say to me, I soak it up like a sponge. But not my language. They think they got the anointing, and that's all she wrote. Good. Good. Newsflash, if you get anointing, it's going to run out if you don't get some more. The wise virgins, the foolish virgins, Sister Kwanzaa, help out the young folk. They don't know that story. The wise virgins, the foolish virgins. The wise virgins had oil and they kept their oil and they contained it and they rationed it out. And then the foolish virgins gave out all their oil and then when it was time to go light up the oil, they didn't have none. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to preach, Jakari. I'm going to preach. Sister Shadi, can I preach? Listen, 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 listen. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Here's the deal. See, if you got anointing, you better stay up under people who are anointed. Because the whole point of the anointing is to drip down from the top of the head to the... Come on. Come on. Psalm 133. (laughs) Whatever's in the pulpit will be in the pews. So, watch me. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Just because they ain't been called in the five-fold ministry don't mean you don't got to hang around them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let me break that down a little bit more. Also, if you are a believer, don't be too good to sit with unbelievers to convert them. You know what? I've seen the scripture been flipped out of context so bad. People go, Jesus sat with publicans and sinners. Right. Sat with them to teach them. Amen. Not be like them. Yep. Amen. Come on. Minister, I'm going to preach. I don't care. <laughs> we have to learn how to be in the environment with unbelievers and learn how to minister to them genuinely. Yeah. See, it's an imbalance. Got to show you. We have the group of people who kick it with them too much, and their light don't shine. Mm. Mm. For those people, that's what he meant by be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yeah. What fellowship have life with them? Yeah. Then you have the group of people who don't want to kick it with them at all, because they feel like, uh-uh, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, and if they touch me, I'm going to get the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. How strong is your head to protection in? <laughs> Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8 tell me that if the wall gets broken down, then the serpent bites you. You should have a wall. Come on. You don't get no wall if you don't Come pray. On. Somebody, I'm going to preach. Okay, let's go. Next thing. Verse 17. Never pay back evil with more evil. I don't care if they don't treat you right. You treat them right. Be like Christ. Yeah. I'm over it. Let's go. Verse 18. Oh, wait, verse 17 some more. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. What did I say honorable means? When you live a life that's honorable, people respect you. Again, they don't have to like you, but they will respect you. I take respect over being liked because your respect for me will keep you from attacking me, targeting me, accusing me. Spreading rumors about me even if you don't like me. But if you like me and you don't respect me, the minute that I say something you don't like, you can change your entire personality towards me and become an enemy because I'm telling you the truth. I ain't saying that. Many of you have created friendships based on where y'all link up, where y'all coincide. But nobody has a different perspective to be a blessing to one another. Some of you have created friendships based on where you agree and not where you disagree. You have to learn how to agree to disagree. Because see, how can two walk together except they agree? That don't mean that you agree in every perspective. It means you learn how to agree on those disagreements. Come on. I'm going to really teach See, see, some of my friends don't agree with the lifestyle I lead. Not because I'm in the wrong, but because they ain't willing to switch over. But they never accuse me. They never come against me. They never disrespect me. They don't talk bad about me in the community because they still respect me. That's good. Live honor. Hallelujah. Verse 18. If you're awake, say amen. 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 Okay. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Jesus. 
Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Watch me. Even when it's quiet, my spirit can detect when there is unrest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Hallelujah. Lack of vocal movement does not mean there's a lack of disrest mm -hmm. or unrest, right? Mm -hmm. People can be quiet and hate your guts. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. People, people, people can say, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and anywhere to do that, I can't stand that struggle. Come on. Wow. Yep. But the Bible says, do all that you can. Not what they can. Okay. See, God judge you, not them. He's going to hold you accountable for what you do. Right. Romans 14, we all got to stand before that judgment seat. Yeah. I ain't worried about what you're going to do. I'm worried about what I'm going to do. Because God going to judge me on my screen based on what I said or didn't say. Not what you said or didn't say. And my Bible tell me that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and dividing of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So even if you thought it inwardly, God heard you. Come on! So I ain't worried about it because Exodus 14, 14, just be still. God will fight for you. Oh yeah, I got that Moses type of faith. I ain't worried about it. I don't worry about what Pharaoh doing. God got me, Jack. You ain't got to like me, but you're going to respect the anointing on my life because I live honorably and I live to live at peace with everyone. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The word of the Lord came to me. Amen. To encourage the saints today. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you feel like I'm rebuking you, it's not me. Amen. I love all of y'all. You can ask my group of people that's around me. I'm not a confrontational person. Mm -hmm. But when God speaks, I speak. Because I'm watching. And each of you are moving in direction with the Lord. And God says there's some things that we all have to work on. All of us. Even the most elect of the saints. Yeah. 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 